Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can play The Last of Us on your PC using RPCS3 and a brand new patch that has been made by two awesome modders in this PlayStation 3 emulators community. Illusion and Zero's patches have not only given us a huge bump in performance, they have also fixed most of the major rendering issues present in The Last of Us on this PS3 emulator. When we combine these patches with the general stability and performance improvements given by the RPCS3 dev team over the past few months, we get a super, super stable and enjoyable experience when playing The Last of Us on PC. One thing I do want to note is that for the best possible stability and performance levels, you are recommended to have a CPU with at least 6 cores or 8 hardware threads. The CPUs I used in testing for this video were an i7-7700K, a Ryzen 5 3600 and 3600X, as well as my own CPUs, an 8700K clocked at 4.6GHz, as well as my Ryzen 7 3700X which is clocked at an all-core of 4.3. Utilizing the settings I'm going to be showing you in this video, all of the CPUs I've just listed had very, very usable stability and performance levels, with the 6-core or higher CPUs having by far the best stability due to the fact that RPCS3 greatly prefers physical cores over threads. This video is going to be separated into three main sections. There's going to be the first section where I show you how to set up the emulator and get all of your preferred optimal settings for The Last of Us. The second section is going to be covering the brand new performance and a graphical patch which was made by Illusion and Zero. Then finally, I'm going to be covering several other bugs and issues you may encounter in The Last of Us. These include patching trap errors, fixing graphical issues, as well as a few areas that require specific settings throughout gameplay. For any Anybody who wants to skip through this video to a specific section, you'll find timestamps for all of those areas down below. As always, anything I use in this video can be found in a download link down in this video's description. For now, let's jump straight across to my desktop and get started with our setup. Setting up RPCS3 is pretty simple, this is just their latest master build. All you need to do is download the PlayStation 3 firmware, then install it by selecting File, Install Firmware. This firmware file is going to be this file, ps3update.pup, you can download it from the description of this video. Once your firmware is installed, it's as simple as setting up your controller inputs, then adding your games to your games list by selecting a file, add games, you can see I've only added The Last of Us. If you want to install your games update, simply drag and drop the PKG for that update onto the emulator's GUI, it will automatically install. Now before we get started with setting up the emulator and getting optimal settings, you want to come to your GUI configs folder, this current settings.ini folder, scroll down and find this meta section. You need to make sure that show debug tab is set to equals true, if this says equals false, simply change it to equals true, then you're going to click file, save, then close this notepad document. Once done, we're going to come back to our main directory and we're going to reopen the emulator. I'm now going to show you all of the most optimal settings for the best performance and stability in The Last of Us. What you want to do is right click your game and select change custom configuration. From here, we're going to start things out in our CPU tab. You basically want to make sure that you're using both of the LLVM recompilers. If you're using an AMD Ryzen CPU, make sure to enable threaded scheduler. And if your CPU has TSX, make sure that it is enabled. This, while it doesn't help with performance, can greatly help with stability in many games just like The Last of Us. Moving on to our GPU tab, we're going to be using the Vulkan Renderer. Simply select it from this drop down here, make sure that you're not using OpenGL. For the best stability, especially so in loading screens in The Last of Us, it is highly advised to set your frame limit to 60 frames per second. And for shader mode, we are going to be using Async with Shader Interpreter. This is a setting that was only recently added in the last month or so to RPCS3. This is by far the most performant and stable of these shader modes. Moving across to audio, the only change I've made here from default is enable time stretching, leaving it at its default of 75%. Next, we move on to the advanced tab. You want to first enable a debug console mode. In my testing, this can drastically help with this game's stability on the emulator. You also, in this GPU tab, want to enable read color buffers. If you don't enable this, your graphics are going to be completely broken. Driver wake up delay is another setting we need to change and set, otherwise your game is going to be very unstable. I would advise setting this somewhere between a value of 150 and 300. On my own system, I get the best stability when I set this to around 200 or 250. 
I'm just going to leave it at 200 for now. V-blank frequency wants to be set at 120 Hz, and that's pretty much all we need to set in this tab. Moving across to our now unlocked debug tab, the only setting you want to enable is this accurate RSX reservation access. While it does say do not activate this, again in my testing I have found that this incredibly improves the stability of The Last of Us on RPCS3. Enable this setting and this setting alone in this debug section. Now whatever you do, do not enable force CPU blit emulation. Doing this is only going to break your graphics and make things like water, rain and other particle effects not rendering gameplay, so all you have to do is copy these settings I've shown thus far, click apply, click save configuration settings. The next thing we need to do is add our patch file which is going to fix the majority of our performance and graphical issues. In the description of this video you will find this patch.yml, all you need to do is download it and place it into your RPCS3 main directory like so. Upon opening it you are going to find that there is a lot of information inside from this top line to here, these are all the performance and graphical fixes, at time of making this video only game version 111 is supported by these patches though this should be changed in future to support game version 1.0. As you can see here, these are fixes for RSX trap errors. This patches out specific crashes in the game, I'm going to show you a little bit later on how these work. For performance, stability and the best compatibility you absolutely need this patch file, make sure you have it in your main folder. Now that we have our game set up for optimal settings and our patch file added, we can launch the game. While I'm loading my already built SPU and shader caches, there is something I need to make note of. The Last of Us is very unstable until you have partially built your SPU and shader cache. You are absolutely going to crash the first time you boot this game, all that you need to do is stay repeatedly booting the game, build your SPU and shader caches, once you have these partially built, the game is going to become dramatically more stable. Upon reaching the title screen, this should be what your game looks like, if it doesn't look like this, please make sure you have your game updated and the patch file correctly added. For reference, this is what the game looks like when it doesn't have its graphical and performance patches applied, these patches give us a serious upgrade to render quality and frame rate. It's not just in this title screen that our performance dramatically improves, when loading into gameplay in my continued game on the sewers mission, you can see here with the patch I'm getting 25 to 26 frames per second. Without this performance and the graphical changes patch, the game runs well under half of this performance level, running somewhere between 12 to 14 frames per second. Again, in contrast to this performance, this patch is unbelievable. The game looks awesome, it runs awesome, and with the settings I've provided you with, you are going to have really, really great stability. Okay, so onto a few issues you may encounter during gameplay when running using these patches. One of the main effects we have disabled with this patch is MLAA, a form of anti-aliasing used by the Uncharted games and The Last of Us. In The Last of Us, there are two areas where you absolutely cannot disable MLAA, the first of these being the Go Bighorn section of the university level, and the second being the financial district part of Pittsburgh. Thankfully, there's a really, really easy way to change this in the patch file I have provided you. All you need to do is come back to your RPCS3 folder before you launch the emulator, then find the line that is specific to disabling MLAA, you can see it here. At the start of this line, you want to put a hash or a pound key symbol, this is going to comment out this line and make it so MLAA will be active for these areas that require it. Once past these two affected areas, the University and Pittsburgh areas, you can re-disable MLAA, once again restoring your performance boost from doing so. Okay, so moving on to an issue that may or may not happen to you throughout gameplay, trap errors. These errors happen mainly in the Naughty Dog titles, so Uncharted and The Last of Us, and while they can be very, very annoying, they are actually quite easy to fix. In the description of this video, you'll find a download link to a file titled patch.yml. That file needs to be downloaded and placed into your RPCS3 folder beside the exe for the emulator. In the event that you encounter any additional trap errors that are not already patched out by this file, I'm now just going to quickly show you how you can add these errors and patch them out yourself, making your game completely crash free. As you've been watching for the last few moments, this is just The Last of Us in regular gameplay. This is what's going to happen when you encounter a trap error. 
Your game is just gonna freeze and it's gonna seem like the emulator has completely crashed. Once you open your emulator's GUI window, you should see in the log section that you have encountered a trap error. It is the information at the end of this error message that we require in order to patch it out. Once you have the address of this trap error, you need to come back to your RPCS3 folder and find your patch.yml which you should have placed into this folder earlier. In this file, you can see a lot of patches for lots of different crashes. These are included for both versions 1.0 and version 1.11. For this crash we just encountered, you can see that I have already added this address and patched it out, meaning that if I go back to that exact same area in gameplay, I'm no longer going to get that crash. If you encounter another trap error and your game freezes exactly like it did to me, what you want to do is copy this last line, then paste it in again making sure to copy the exact format of this patch. Into this area, you want to copy the patch error that appears in your emulator's GUI. If you wish to do so, you can make note of which crash it is fixing, though this step is absolutely not required to fix the trap error. Since I already have this address patched already, there is no need for me to keep this line. I'm just going to delete it so I can keep my trap error patch file as clean as possible. Make sure that once you have your trap patched out, you click File, Save, you can then close this folder. At this point, you can simply reload the emulator, reload your game, that specific trap error and crash will no longer happen to you on your system. A huge thank you to Aphelion Gaming for finding most of these trap error addresses and creating this patch file for all of us to use. These trap errors should only occur in two sections of the game, the hotel area and also this underground waterways section. Speaking of the waterways section, there is in fact yet another unfixable crash that, to be honest, doesn't even need a workaround for anymore but it can be a little confusing if you encounter it. Basically what happens is in this section where Joel and Ellie both fall in the water, you're going to get to this part where Joel gets swept away by the stream. As soon as you get to this loading point just at the end of this section, your game is absolutely going to freeze the first time just like so. At the present moment, there is no workaround for fixing this crash, at least as far as I am aware. To get around it, all that you need to do is close the emulator and then reload the game. Once you load back into gameplay, you should be loaded into the exact frame where the crash happened. All you need to do is just continue gameplay. This crash has now been worked around. Unfortunately, without completely disabling the depth buffer and removing all the lighting from your game, there is no current way to fix these strange sparkly lights that appear when it rains or underwater. On top of these small graphical issues, there are a few other oddities that I'm now going to go over. Now, while disabling MLAA does give us a great performance boost, it does have some graphical oddities. For example, when using Joel's hearing ability to see enemies through walls, if you have MLAA disabled, this ability is no longer going to work. This is just something I wanted to make you guys aware of in case you were wondering why it was not working with this patch enabled. There are also several areas in gameplay that are completely fixed by using the Bloom workaround in this brand new patch. For example, all of these aiming reticles, be it with thrown objects or your bow and arrow, can be completely fixed with this simple change. With this small Bloom fix in our patch file, it fixes almost all of the overexposed Bloom affected areas as well as these aiming reticles for bows and thrown objects. In respect to getting The Last of Us up and running in the most stable and performant manner possible, that's pretty much it. If you have any additional settings that you would like to make me aware of that can in any way boost either the performance or stability of this or any other title, please do feel free to let me know either down in a comment underneath this video or over on my Discord server. I am always looking for new and improved settings so that I can make guides like these even better for all of you guys trying to play your favourite games through emulation. Before I go, I want to give a massive thank you to Illusion and Zero for creating the patches necessary to get the game running as well as it currently is. A massive thank you to Aphelion Gaming for creating the patch.yml for removing the trap errors from The Last of Us. And finally, a massive thank you to the developers of RPCS3. The performance and stability improvements you guys have made in the last few months have definitely not gone unnoticed by myself and many others in the community. Keep up the amazing work, you guys are awesome. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. Once again guys, if you enjoyed it, please do leave me a like down below. And additionally, if there are any games that you would like to see me give the similar treatment, do let me know. And if it is at all possible to get those games up and running in a performant state, I will happily make a guide for all of you. Again, thank you all very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Remember to like this video if you liked it. 
dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.